Good morning, Radical Praisers. We're so glad you joined us today. And we pray that not only have you enjoyed our lessons, but that God has used them to speak into your lives and help you grow closer to Him. Last week, we kicked off a new series talking about being thankful. Minister Jones talked about the challenges the children of Israel had with consistently being thankful. And they, much like many of us, in spite of God's continued faithfulness, they still struggle with always being thankful. No matter if it's in the good times or bad times, simply put, in all things we must give thanks. But hey, before we dive any deeper into our lesson, you already know how we do it. Let's praise and worship our God. Don't fit in, you were made for brilliance and you were made to win Life will make it easy, child, sometimes you'll have to cry But every tear that drops will make it easier to fly higher Over the tree you better sing, further Come on. So fast your heart stops harder Than when the beat drops deeper Into the heart of baby Where I am not rejected In fact, you call me perfect Maybe now I can see such a time as this I'll spread my wings and fly by the horizon And take a drink of the sun that is rising Cause it's a brand new day And I'm feeling good Feeling good I'm not afraid anymore So let's do this It's a brand new day And I'm feeling good Yeah, yeah, yeah You say You're not the average boy Don't you shy away, you're quite the savage boy I am not afraid to take your hand, my boy Don't you know your greatness is a hand, my boy And what a waste it would be To squander all the gifts that you've given to me Steward in the words, he just that is the key To opening the door to my own destiny So how often do you complain? No, really, think about it. How often do you complain about something, big or small? Sadly, you probably can't even think of a real answer because we tend to complain so much that we don't even know we're doing it. How often do you say things that you're thankful for? See, probably not nearly as much as you complain, right? Because for some reason, it seems easier to complain than to be thankful. Do you feel happier when you're complaining or when you're thankful? Personally, I'm much happier when I'm living a thankful life. It's just easier to be happy when you're thankful. How can you not be thankful when you think of all of that, all that God has done for us? See, Colossians 2 and uh, 6 through 7 says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built 
up in him, strengthening in the faith as we were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Do you want something to be thankful for? How about the fact that you've received Jesus? That's worthy of being thankful for right there. This verse is telling us how we, sh we should live. It says we should live our lives in him, rooted and built up, strengthened in the faith, and overflowing with thankfulness. Isn't that an amazing thing to think of? Overflowing with thankfulness? Being so full of thankfulness that you just can't keep it to yourself. And it just spills over and out of you. Whether you know it or not, I would say that most of the time, you're overflowing with something. Even if you don't realize it. Even if it's not on purpose. Sometimes, during the school year, you guys are overflowing with stress. Stress about homework, assignments, projects, studying, grades, friends, even sports. It's all you can think about. And you can't help but overflowing with it. See, sometimes you're overflowing with happiness. You've had a great day. Kicking it with your friends. You have plans for the weekend. And you're having so much fun that you're just overflowing with happiness. I've also seen people overflowing with jealousy. Wanting what someone else has so badly that they just can't help the emotions of, from flooding out of them. One quote I've seen says, don't let the food on your plate go cold while looking at what's on somebody else's. That's where some people find themselves caught up in. I've seen people overflowing with compassion, so moved by someone else's situation that the desire to help just overflows. Whatever you're feeling the most or thinking about the most, that's what you're going to be overflowing with. So how do you overflow with thankfulness? Well, first, you have to try. You have to make a conscious decision to start being thankful more than, you're not, than you are now. Make an effort to be thankful on purpose. It has to be intentional. Don't just wait for something to come along that makes you feel thankful, but instead actively look at all the things in your life that you're thankful for. Another way to, way to overflow with thankfulness is to be thankful for the big things and for the little things. I want to share a short video with you that I think will help us all better understand the little things that we probably take for granted. Grass is soft, like the angel hair pasta, kind of grass kind of resembles that. I guess just, I don't know. <laughs> I've been blind since birth. I have a disease called Leber's congenital amaurosis. People often ask me, you know, is it hard being blind? Is it scary? And it's not. It's just a normal way of life for me. There was a time in my life when I was angry about being blind. I was very into makeup and trying to look my best. I really wanted to look in the mirror and see what I look like, but I couldn't. The Lord spoke to me and he told me that I am beautiful on the inside and that I don't have to worry about what I look like on the outside and that he is the only one who can tell me what I look like. The mirror can't. Sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit of a burden to people. See you back in front of you, girl. Sometimes I wish I didn't really need that much help. I wish that I didn't have to rely on them. Okay, got everything with? Yep. Alright, we're out the front door this time. Alrighty. I'll break too. <laughs> If I could see, I don't think my faith would be as strong. Because for a blind person, you have to rely on the Lord. 
it's like your faith becomes more real because you're used to not seeing things. You're used to believing in someone that you can't see. Like for example, my mom, I can't see her. I may be able to hear her, but even if I couldn't, I can't see her, but I know she's there. So for me, I think it's easier to know and to understand that though I can't see God, He's really there. I think it has a lot to do with walking by faith and not by sight. I have this desire to help people, but I feel like being blind sort of limits me as to what I can do. But the reality is, God has given me a gift of singing for Him and leading worship, and I feel like that's my way of helping people. And I'm grateful for that. I have so much joy and so much anticipation because I know that the first face I'm ever going to see is Jesus. And that means the world to me. Wow! That was powerful. I don't know about you, but I know after watching that video, there's a ton more things I should be grateful for and thankful to God for blessing me with. And I'm not even talking about the big stuff, but the many little everyday things that I take for granted. See, we shouldn't just be thankful for the big things that happen, like getting an A in your toughest class or getting exactly what you wanted for your birthday. Be thankful for the small things as well, like when your mom makes your favorite dinner or dessert, or when the bus is on time, or when you hit that jackpot and find a fry in your order of onion rings. That's what I call a double up. You don't, either, you, don't only, you don't only complain about the big things, do you? Of course you don't. You complain about pretty much everything, big or small. If you're wearing shoes that are uncomfortable, what do you do? Well, you probably complain about them. <laughs> about how they're pinching your feet, about how your feet hurt, your toes are smushed, about how they're so uncomfortable. And when was the last time that you were thankful because your shoes were comfortable? Do you see where I'm going with this? If it's big enough to complain about, then it's certainly big enough to be thankful about. So be thankful for comfortable shoes, for good friends, for the piece of pizza you got that had the perfect ratio of cheese, sauce, and pepperonis. Be thankful for it all. Another thing that's sure to make you overflow with thankfulness is to make being thankful a part of your prayer life. Sure, most of us would say that we're very thankful for God and all that he's done for us. We, we would probably all say that we're extremely thankful for the things God has blessed us with. But when you pray, is it usually, is it usually to say thank you or is it to ask for something? Ephesians 5 and 20 says, always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When was the last time you said thank you to God? See, this verse says we should always give thanks to God for everything. It's easy to read a verse like that and kind of skip over its actual meaning. But seriously, give thanks for everything. Is, it that, is that even possible, though? I, I want you to do something for me. Take a few minutes, and I want you to start at the beginning of your day today and think of some of the things that happened today that you should give God thanks for. Oh, 
Okay, okay, great. I'm sure you thought of some awesome things, and you're right. You should definitely give thanks to God for those. But I bet you probably missed a few things. First of all, you woke up today. That's something to be thankful for all in itself. You woke up, you were breathing, and you were physically able to get out of your bed. Don't you think God deserves some thankfulness for that? Also, the sun was rising when you got up, even if there may have been some clouds uh, that may have been blocking it, but it was there and it was present in the sky. A beautiful sunrise brought the good news that surprise, you're not going to freeze to death today. Then you got out, out of the bed to go to the bathroom with a working shower, toilet, and sink. You got to brush your teeth with running water without being afraid about whether or not the water was going to give you any disease. Most of the world can't say the same. So that's something worth, worthy of being thankful for. And let's not forget that when you woke up, you woke up into the promise of eternal life, not death. You woke up forgiven because Jesus has died for your sins. All of these things you have to be thankful for in your day. And your day hasn't even really started yet. It's still morning. But did you thank God for all of those things this morning? Probably not. We become so used to them that we start to think, take them for granted and we forget to be thankful for them. See, if you want to overflow with thankfulness, start telling God thank you every single time you encounter something that's blessed with you, that he's blessed you with. You won't stop saying thank you all day long. First Chronicles 16 and 34 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. When the things get tough in our lives, it can become a little hard to be thankful. We tend to focus on the bad stuff instead of the good stuff, complaining instead of saying thank you. And sometimes things are just going to be hard. Things in life aren't going to, be, to get pretty bad. Things in life are going to get pretty bad every now and then. But that doesn't mean that thankfulness should stop. Even if you're going through a hard time, where it's hard to think of things to be thankful for, you always have this. The Lord is good and his love for you endureth forever. No matter what else goes wrong in your day or week or month, the Lord is still good. No matter how many times you mess up, no matter how many mistakes you make, how many times you fail, his love for you never fails. And that's worth thanking him for. This week, I want to ask you, I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. Do you think there are things in your life that you forget to say thank you for? Like what? What do you think you overflow with most often? Is it thankfulness or something else? And then finally, do you spend more time complaining than you do being thankful? Is that something you want to change? See, at the beginning of our lesson today, overflowing with thankfulness for everything in our life seemed like it may be difficult to do. But after remembering all that God has done for us and all that we have to be thankful for, it doesn't seem hard at all. It's so important to be thankful and we have so much to be thankful for, but if you're used to complaining all the time and not really used to being thankful, it's going to take a little bit of effort. So last week, Minister Tammy asked you guys to do a thankful jar. If you've not yet had an opportunity to start your thankful jar for this month, you can start today. All you need is a container, something like this jar, and, and slips of paper. Each day we want you and each family member uh, to write down one thing that you're thankful for. It should be all things big and small. And then on Thanksgiving, we want you and your family members to take turns reading each slip of paper in the jar. This is an exercise that will help you establish, will help us establish a, and maintain a heart of thankfulness. If you've already started or when you do, what types of things will you put on it? Are you only going to count the big things? See, what are some of the small things that you're going to work on being thankful for even this week? Do you all agree that you're happier when you're thankful than you are when you're complaining? We have eternal life through Jesus. 
Is that something you think about every day? And if not, do you think it's something that you should think about every day? We all have so much to be thankful for because of Jesus. And I know that if we make an effort and really start thinking about all that he's done for us, it won't be long until all of us are overflowing with thankfulness. Well, Radical Praisers, that's our time for today. We pray you've enjoyed this week's message. And don't forget to make time to give thanks. Love you and be blessed.